Greetings, dear friends. I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Toyota RAV4. All-wheel drive in the second generation RAV4 is very different from what you are used to in typical crossovers. It is here permanent full with a center differential. If we talk about the closest analogs, then this is the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo over a closer relative of the Toyota Celica, from which, in fact, the mechanism is inherited. The angular gearbox ducked to the gearbox has a center differential and there are no couplings on the rear axle, just the gearbox and CV joints. Taking into account the low power of the graphic motors, it is possible to break something in the transmission only with great skill. Of the resource breakdowns, you can usually find here only the wear of the drive shaft bearings and the wear on the CV joints. The propeller shaft usually requires attention after 100 or 1500 mileage. The constant velocity joints are conventionally eternal. They fail if the cover and grease are damaged or not replaced in time, or after mechanical damage. Increased backlash at the front hinges usually appears only after 200-250,000 km. An angle gearbox with a differential, it is also a rear axle power takeoff module or simply a transfer case, is a rather expensive thing, but at the same time it is reliable. Problems usually appear if the oil level is missed or the oil seals are damaged. A new gearbox costs from 120,000 rubles, but fortunately buying not a new one but a lie will not be a problem. However, regular checks for leaks and oil are required. Cars with manual transmission are relatively rare, the bulk of the RAV4 has an automatic transmission, but all the same, we know that the mechanics are not surprises, they have a long resource, especially if you do not overload the synchronizers with quick shifts and change the oil end time. As for the automatic transmission, it is simply excellent here. Boxes of the U140 series have long earned the right to be called one of the best automatic machines. Of course, there are only four stages in it, all bought with electronic control, but on a relatively frontal car, a multi-stage automatic transmission doesn't provide significant fuel economy in highway modes. And in an urban cycle, partial blocking of the gas turbine engine and active engine braking make it possible to have quite acceptable fuel consumption. Do not pay attention to the passport consumption data, it is still turns out about 15 liters per 100, only the installation of the variator was able to reduce it by another one and a half or two, two liters. This wonderful U140 also has weak points, there are the front planetary gear and the back cover, but with the timely change of the oil in the box, the health of the electronics and the absence of overheating, the problems of these units can only be encountered with runs for 300-350,000 km, if not later. Unless with 3.0, 3.3 engines on Lexus, the numbers may be a little less impressive. At maximum mileage, it breaks the drum seat due to an unsuccessful Teflon compression ring. If the owners regularly abuse vigorous starts, the lock linings of the gas turbine engine can wear out up to a mileage of 200,000. The most common trouble with automatic transmissions on the second generation RAV4 was the gearbox control unit malfunction, mainly due to the unreliability of contracts due to factory cold soldering, but there are also damage to the tracks due to vibrations and firmware failures. Even five years ago, automatic transmission electronics failures were more common than mechanical problems, and I'd say that such defects will clearly continue to occur. Motors 1AZ-FE and 2AZ-FE differ only in displacement, in operation they are exactly the same. The first series of these engines differed in one unpleasant feature, they had a floating thread in a cylinder block. As a result, raised by cylinder head and disrupted the work of the gas joint, blow out the cylinder head gasket. For cars with high mileage, this problem has most likely already been resolved and within the framework of the revocable company, the threads were reinforced by installing a sleeve, the same is done in case of repair. The defect manifests itself especially clearly during overheating and they do happen. The radiators on these machines are rather weak and tend to lose honeycombs, but the main culprit, culprit for leaks and overheating is the pump. You need to change it every 50,000 run, even if you install the original spare part every time. When buying an unoriginal, look at the configuration of the blades. Two simple designs with a small impeller size may not ensure the normal operation of the 2.4-liter engine cooling system. The not very successful and reliable design of the collector on previous style machines is prone to crumble of the catalyst during cold start and overheating in summer. In addition, there are four oxygen sensors in this case, and they are not very reliable, which significantly increases the likelihood of failure. After restyling on European cars, the collector has changed, the resource has grown, only two lambdas remain. But all the same, after 200-250,000 km it can begin to crumble and can even damage the piston group. And therefore, I strongly recommend constantly monitoring this condition. 
Troubles associated with oil leaks, both through the oil pressure sensor on the unit and through the not particularly successful ventilation system, also happen regularly. Along the way, the throttle well suffers, which quickly clogs up, and the intake manifold, which is literally overgrown with deposits from the inside. Therefore, with runs over 200,000 km, it is better not only to clean the throttle valve and the crankcase ventilation system, but also to remove and clean the entire intake. It is best to do this by checking and replacing all seals from the injector rings to the intake pipes. The rubber elements become unusable, which is why the inlet becomes leaky. The timing chain resource ranges from 150 to 250 300,000 km, and this is an excellent indicator for modern engines. Occasionally, the phase shifter may not live up to such runs, but the hydraulic tensioner on these engines can be called a consumable. Its replacement is required every 50 to 60,000 km. Fortunately, they are not particularly expensive parts. If the engine starts to run noisier, then it may be time to adjust the valves. There are no hydraulic lifters. At the same time, check the chain. The piston group is not prone to coking, and if you do not forget to change the oil and not overheat the engine, then it will travel more than 300,000 km and sometimes even 500. In general, the AZFE is an excellent example of the most reliable motor that doesn't annoy with breakdowns during operation. Of course, such a large resource is largely due to a small maintenance interval of 10,000 km, but even in the USA, where the attitude to routine maintenance is different, these motors run great. The 1.8-liter motor of the 1WZ-FE series is noticeably different from the older ones. I am not inclined to bump into Toyota hate, but this is one of the most unsuccessful Toyota engines of the beginning of the century. The engine appeared back in 1998, but until 2002 the manufacturers couldn't or didn't want to correct the most obvious drawback, the oil burner of the piston group. The rings were jammed due to a small oil drain holes in the piston. A thin walled cast iron sleeve in turn is easily burned out due to stock rings. After 2003 the piston group was replaced, but the chances of meeting the oil and oil engine remain. Some of the engines were repaired collective farm by drilling holes in the piston or replacing the pistons without replacing the liner. And now repairs with tolling the rings are carried out regularly as soon as the oil consumption reaches a liter or two per thousand kilometers. In the event of the slightest overheating, the cylinder block led, not to mention the guaranteed occurrence of the piston rings. The resource of the timing chains is also not like the one of the older brothers. Here 150,000 is rather the upper limit of the mileage, and jumps happened even with the runs up to 100. Another disadvantage is the lack of classic cast iron valve seats. In case of damage, which happens relatively often, you have to grind the hardened coating and put cast iron, or change the entire cylinder head. And despite all the measures, the maximum resource of the piston group will still not exceed 200,000 km. Little things in the face of a dirty choke, flying coils, poor engine mounts, oil leaks and other things do not didn't go anywhere. And this is one of the most common Toyota engines in the middle class. Not surprisingly, the impact on the image was sensitive, and the double Z series is still remembered today. And I will only advise you to refuse to buy a car with such an engine, especially since it will definitely be front-wheel drive. Diesel graphic is also better not to buy, even if you can get free diesel fuel. The 1CD FTV engine is an, in addition to capricious fuel equipment is also distinguished by a rare fragility of the cylinder head. The partitions between the wells crack easily and naturally after a long high load or simply from operation on high sulfur diesel fuel. The timing belt turned out to be capricious, which is like death for a diesel engine. The regular interval for its replacement is noticeably overstated. It is recommended to change it once every 150,000, but three times more often, if you do not want to change the motor assembly. EGR with an electric drive is also far from an engineering masterpiece, so its failure and the intake manifold clogged to zero are common. The variable geometry turbine is very expensive and requires regular cleaning of the mechanism. Electrohydraulic injectors are also expensive and very demanding on fuel. On this information about the problems of Toyota, our AV4 is exhausted. If you know more or disagree with what you heard, I am waiting for you in the comments.